Hello and welcome to this second video in the series Planner 101 where we look at some of the basic principles of planning using the planner tool, the free planner tool. So in session one we talked about the different types of tasks that you can have, normal tasks, summary tasks, milestones. And in this one we're going to talk about dependencies, how we drive a plan so that some tasks start after other tasks and how that flows through so when changes to one task automatically apply to other tasks. So we're going to set up a little bit of a plan, working our way through some of those examples um, to have a look at how that works. Uh, we're going to use some summary groups as well. This one we can see here at the top is the overall project summary. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this one into a summary group itself. So this is going to be a summary task, just like that. And then we're going to come and start putting our tasks in within that group like this. I'm just going to do create and close, and you'll see I've got a milestone there that's set up at a particular uh, date and time, like that. We'll just have it back as a, well, probably as a one day duration task. So a one day duration task, like that. And as we add each successive task uh, to the plan, it's going to automatically drop it after the preceding task, because logically that's the way people generally work on a project. You know, they'll start, I've got a task, when that task finishes, I've got another one due to start, and I'll work my way through. And as I'm adding each one, they're appearing after the preceding task, um, like that. Now, they look like looks like there's a gap, but actually, as far as working time is concerned, they're immediately after each other. So the working day in this calendar is set to be eight hours, um, with a one-hour break at lunchtime. It starts from eight in the morning and runs till five in the evening. We can see these tasks start at eight in the morning, run to five in the evening. So that means the next task would start at eight o'clock the next day. If we start to get these out of sync a little bit, then, uh, and I make this task, for example, a six hour task. Now when I have my next task, it can start immediately after that at two hours, and then it's gonna have its next six hours in the next day. So let's come and add the next one. Uh, actually, that's I think they're automatically start, set to start at the beginning of the next day. But that's, so this is now starting to become useful because when we think about dependencies, um, that's not just the sort of, well, we're, we're dropping them in at the start of the next day each time, but dependencies actually control exactly when things start following the preceding one. So let's set a dependency for this instead. If we go and look in the form in a bit more detail, we can see the duration is being controlled by the start date plus a period of time. So um, if I wanted this instead to follow the preceding task exactly, I would use a single predecessor. Start immediately after the prior task, like that, and run for six hours in this case. Now we can see that our tasks, this one, this task finishes at three o'clock. This one starts at three o'clock and it runs through to lunchtime the next day, which is two hours in that day plus four hours in the next day. That's a predecessor and we can see it's got an arrow there which controls the linkage between the two. So in fact, if we come in and make this task longer, and we might make this to be a three day task. It will automatically push the tasks beyond it out as well. So they are now tied together. Any changes further back up that tree, and of course you can have lots of these predecessors if you want to, um, push the other ones out. So if you were building a, a fairly simple plan and you had activities that you're doing over a series of weeks and they're starting after each other immediately, you can just set up a standard set of predecessors like that and any changes shortening or lengthening of tasks will push the others out. Really easy to do um, and you know that then sequencing of the activities and the dates they start and finish is done automatically for you. Um, so some and you can do that with any sort of task actually. So I'm going to change one of these tasks up here into be a milestone instead. Um, and we can do the same thing. So we could say well we want this task to start or we want, yeah, we want this task to start after the milestone. So we come to the task that we are scheduling and we say what we want the predecessor to be. Now it's set up again to automatically offer you the task one before because that's the most common thing that people do. Um, and that's what we're gonna do in this particular case. 
you're going to see that actually also here there's what we call a lag. So the, the new task is defined and we want it to start zero days after the preceding task and run for a period. Now it's zero days, so that means it starts immediately. But actually we could change that if we want to. So let's look at the zero days first of all immediately after that milestone. As milestones have zero duration, they're just flags, indicators within the within the plan. The other one is starting you know, at exactly that same eight o'clock start. But we can put a lag on it if we want to. So let's come into here. Because it might be milestone is contract award. We're not gonna do anything for a week because there's a standstill process or something like that. So let's go five days. So push that out and that will automatically not start that task until five days after the milestone. They're really useful lags like that. You're not forced to put in tasks for things like waiting for some feedback, um, that sort of thing. You just put a lag instead on it like that. And you see in the table here, it's showing us the predecessor conditions. This task is starting after task four. This task is starting after task two with a five day lag, task two plus five days. Um, now, if we wanted this task to start after some of these others as well, we can use a multiple predecessor. So I'm gonna actually put in a new task again. So we'll do add item. This task, we want to start after these others have been completed. Now we could go in and put a predecessor from each task in. We don't want to do all of them, but we are going to do a couple of them. So let's go and have a look at that here. So we see there's an option on the form, multiple predecessors. Um, it actually takes you to this tab here, but the link will do it straight away for you. And here you use that sort of notation that we've been looking at here to define the rules for that condition. So we're going to have, um, following that milestone that's up here again, so that's two, um, but we don't want our next task to start. It's two plus, say, three days, um, like that. Semicolon to divide it, and then we pick our next rule. It might be this task uh, here, for example, which is task four, like that. Now, we've got a check button here because <coughs> we want to make sure that that multiple predecessor rule is valid. Single predecessors pretty straightforward to see how that's working. But multiple predecessors, especially in a large plan, it can be complicated to see how they're working. And it is possible to try and set up a circular loop where one task start date is dependent on itself because you're linking from tasks beyond it, you know, further down the chain. So check, we'll just make sure that that's okay as indeed it is. In this case, we can see that visually okay, but it's not always possible to do that. And so it's worked out. Now you'll see there are several arrows flowing into this one. And in fact, if we made that rule a little bit more obvious, let's do task four uh, plus three days like that, just to push it out. You'll see we've got several things driving the start date here. So the arrows are indicating how that's been driven. And, and the system will balance off what's the most pressing demand on that, um, which must be uh, this plus three days that we just added. Um, and obviously as these change, it will push it all out again. That, that still flows through in the same way. Um, so we can make all these, and you do see sometimes people putting every task as a dependency to every other task. At the end of a group, you've got a milestone. You don't want the milestone to happen until everything else has happened. Now you can do that by putting it in the group here and flowing everything into it <laughs> with all the predecessor rules. Um, because currently, you know, these two are not driving that task. So I could make this task really long. I could come here and say, well, this is gonna be 10 days long or well, let's make it 10 days long like that. And that's pushing the overall group out, but it's not pushing this item out. So people often will, uh, if they're wrapping up a, a group of activities with a milestone, you know, tendering complete, something like that, they will drive that with a whole load of predecessor links within the group, which isn't the most effective way of doing it. Um, it, 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 
it actually clogs up the diagram so you can't really see the dependencies that you're really interested in and there's a much better way of doing it and that is to set up a new task which is outside the group so I'm going to add a new item here but this time it's going to be it's going to have no group affiliation so create and close like that so um, it's a task which is in the main plan but it's not in that group you can see it's not pushed out that group boundary we're just going to make that a milestone it doesn't have to be a milestone that we do this with but it's just a common thing that happens so this milestone is currently just set on a date it's just the date that we gave it but actually we want that milestone to happen when everything in the group has been done so what we can do is we could like i say follow an arrow from all of these one two three four five tasks into here um, but it would like I say break up the lines of the things we actually want to see and instead we can make the, the dependency happen based on the group itself so let's pick a single predecessor but rather than one of the individual tasks that it's suggesting we can come up here and pick this one number one which is the overall summary so now you can see that that milestone happens when everything in the summary is complete so if we were to push that that out further by even doubling the length of that the milestone still doesn't happen till this the entire summary is complete and this allows you to chunk your plans up really well don't start phase two till phase one is finished. Of course, sometimes you might choose to overlap them and you might trigger phase two starting from an activity within phase one, something that's halfway through perhaps, rather than the end of the overall phase. But when you are running things off the end of overall phases, use the summary group. It makes it much easier to see everything else that's going on. Um, makes the plan planning tool run much more efficiently as well. It's not having to work out lots of complicated linkages all the time so it's a it's a win all the way around when you get into big complicated plans when you've got you know lots of things vis on the screen so that it's not visible anymore and you're scrolling for things a really good uh, idea is to use colors here because you can then see the arrow as it's coming through we're just going to do a couple of uh, things uh, around that so we're just gonna have a little look at that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this summary group i think we did this actually in the last session as well and I'm going to do that um, a couple of times. So we've now got quite a bit of content here. And actually, you'll see that when we copy a group, it copies the depend for the tasks within that group. It copies the dependency linkages. So it's not linking this task back to the original version of it. It's linking it within the summary group because that's the most logical. You know, you want the group to work like the last group did. If it's a repeated exercise that you're doing, you want it to logically flow in the same sort of way. So we can establish those there. Now, this task down here um, is currently being driven off the one single predecessor. You might want to drive it off a number of those different summary groups so we could make this multiple predecessors. So we could come back here and we could say it's been driven off one, but it's also perhaps been driven off 19 as well. Um, and we might make that a plus five days like that. And it's also been driven off the end of 25. So there are multiple different summary groups driving that dependency. Now, and we can see that there, we've got those three showing. Um, now, as we can't see <laughs> the task that's coming from up above, um, that, you know, they all look the same, these lines. But if you change colors on things, then that will flow down the lines as well. And that's a really neat trick. So let's just change this one here. So I'll come in and you see they've got default colors, but we can change that and pick up something different, like pink. And that will follow down its dependency lines as well, which just makes it a little clearer when you're looking at things as what, what's coming in from where. Um, of course, you don't have to mix. You don't have to have all these things from summary groups you can mix and match summary groups and individual tasks so this was task four so maybe it doesn't have to finish after everything in this summary group just after task four so let's edit that and come back and pick it up after uh, not one but four 
and now you can see the pink line has been picked up instead and we're finishing after whichever is the worst case condition of task four and these other ones one of them's got a five day lag on it so these dependencies you know are, are really good already this is quite a complicated plan now and um, it would take a bit of thinking as to which tasks might move and how that would affect the things further downstream but you don't have to worry about that because the system does it all for you you just simply change the individual task and those dependencies will handle all those onward flows of the information so dependency is a really important part of planning not every task has to have a dependency against it some things happen on a particular day um, and so they're scheduled to happen on that day they're not necessarily dependent on things before or after them um, and so you can just set them to happen on particular days um, and that's absolutely fine but many things in a plan will be dependent on other things and by establishing these links formally at the beginning as you're building the plan it's logical to progress it in that way you add a new task okay this task you're thinking has to start after these other three things have been done and then you put those linkages in if you build all the task you know just the information about a task and then you go back and try and link them that can be a little bit complicated because it's difficult to remember which one's where it's much easier to do it as you go along um, but as you've seen we can adjust them and alter them after the event if we want to as well so um, that's looking through dependencies uh, like I say really really important topic for understanding planning and getting to grips with it and it's nice and easily done here so that was session two looking at dependencies in session three we're going to talk about resourcing our tasks because we want people to do them uh, to achieve the objectives that we've set okay thank you very much